Yo, today I'm gonna to show you a super powerful React and Next.js pattern that will change how you fetch and pass data between your server components. Let's get to it. So when working in the Next.js app router, we're often gonna be leveraging React server components to not only fetch data, but also check authorization state, right? So in this example server component here, we're gonna be using Next auth to get the session, and then we're also gonna be using Prisma to fetch the related user object from our database. On top of that, we have some dummy functions which are gonna fetch fake information, so posts and analytics. And then finally, we're gonna be rendering this client component here, which we can see on the side. Now, there isn't inherently wrong with anything that we're doing here for this single page. We do need to check the auth and we do need to query Prisma to get that data from our database. The problem arises when we have potentially tens or hundreds of different screens that need to get this user object or run some server-side logic that's more complicated than a single Prisma query. So what we do to address this is create an asynchronous higher order component. So what is an asynchronous higher order component? Let's take a look at this page file as an example. So here we have a very similar layout where we have the suspense rendering a server component, but instead we have this with user higher order component here. And you can see as the children, we're actually rendering a asynchronous function instead of a React component. And in here, we can actually fetch that data that we are fetching initially in that other example, and then finally render our UI. Now there are two key points here. One, you can see that our code is way cleaner and we don't have to call auth or query Prisma, but also you can actually render children in a function and an asynchronous function on top of that and fetch data server side in it. So let's take a look at this with user component to actually understand what we're doing here. So within with user, you can see that we're running this auth call again, we're getting the user ID and redirecting if they are not logged in and then querying Prisma. Finally, we are checking if this children prop is a function. And if it is, we're gonna render it. Otherwise, we just render it as a React node. This is also all wrapped in a try catch. And if we have this on error function added, we will return it. Otherwise, we're gonna return an error state. So let's take a look at the with user props to understand what's going on here. So this children prop that we often pass in React components is now a union of three different types. It's either a function that returns a JSX element an asynchronous function that returns a JSX element as designated by this promise return type, or it's just a plain JSX element and we don't have to actually call anything to render it. So that is why at the bottom here, we first check if it is a function and then render that function, or we just return the plain JSX element as is. Now, you'll also see that these two functions take the with user children props, and this is how we actually pass the user and the session from the body of this with user higher order component to any server or client com components that want to consume that data. So user is just this user get payload helper function from Prisma, uh, which is an empty include. So this is just gonna return our user object from our schema right here pretty simple. Uh, and then we also have this session, which is returned from next auth, which we get from this auth call right here. Now this logic doesn't just apply to server components in Next.js. We can actually use this in client components as well. So as a very basic example, we have this counter right here where we can increment and decrement and then set the number. So here in this body of this component for this page.tsx file, we have the state and then we have these increment and decrement functions. We also have this counter UI where we're going to prop drill the count and these on increment, on decrement, and set value functions. And then finally, we have this other component here, which also needs this counter logic at the bottom right here. Now, just a single use state call, and this counter example is a bit of a toy example, but it makes a lot more sense within the context of a form or animation state or something like that. Uh, but as you can see, we have this with counter higher order component, and here we have this count and then the increment and decrement functions within this body right here, much like we fetched the Prisma user object and checked auth within the asynchronous with user higher order component. So now we can take this function, which is not asynchronous as you'll notice, and then pass in these count, increment, decrement, and set count values to this counter UI. And if we were to create more counters throughout our app, we could just use this with counter higher order component rather than putting it in the body here um, as Copilot is showing. And that's it. So I found this pattern is particularly useful when it comes to enforcing a role-based access control when it comes to you know rendering specific UI and then also fetching data from our database that we need often like the user object. So as always, the GitHub link is gonna be in the description. I hope you enjoyed this shorter, more faster paced video and I will see you in the next one.